If you're trying to sell a house right now, you may be thinking, I missed the mark. And you may be right. Tables have turned, guys. It is more of a buyer's market than it's been in the last two years. You can still come out on top in this market. And here's how you're going to do it. Interest rates are on the rise. The market is definitely softening. We're seeing that here in Maryland. There are key things that you can do that are going to give you the most value for the sale of your home. There still are a lot of buyers, uh, but they are pulling back. I think there's been numbers like 78 or 80 percent of the buyers have exited the market because of the high interest rates. Uh, the tables have definitely turned for sure. Uh, when you're looking at buyers with the prices that we're looking at houses right now uh, from just six months ago, they're looking at 30, 40, 50 percent more in mortgage payments. Um, and, um, you know, what we're seeing is that the listings are going on the market. We see who all the buyers are in the first two days, uh, then it dries up completely. If people aren't making offers on your home, typically buyers are thinking, you know, something must be wrong. Longer days on the market means price reductions. We're starting to see in just about every state in the United States, double digit price reductions, 10, 14, 20% in price reductions, especially when we get to areas like Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are things like we're saying that you can do, and I just want to kind of run through those tonight. If you're looking to sell, and guys, if you're out there buying, stick around because you're going to pick up some good nuggets here too. We're going to dive right in here and let's kind of talk about, you know, you're hiring an agent. What should you expect from the agent? Uh, what things should they be doing? And really, um, who you should be hiring in the first place. The first step is making sure that when you are selecting your agent, you have a really good conversation with them. Do they consider themselves the neighborhood expert? And really look and ask them what transactions they've done as far as on the listing side in the past 12 months. Yeah, we all know who the neighborhood experts are. You drive by the signs and you kind of, you know, the one that's serving your community the best uh, or the most. And uh, you want to talk to that agent, right? So um, it's now is not the time to be hiring your friend that lives 45 minutes away, especially in the market when, you know, negotiations are going to play a big part right now. Um, understanding the buyer, understanding the neighborhood, the area, uh, how your house compares instantly. They'll know how your house compares to the other homes that have recently sold. Uh, and they'll be able to give you a really good idea of what they think they can sell your house for. Now, whether you use them or not, that's up to you. Uh, but certainly make sure that that neighborhood expert is part of who you interview to sell your home. So if you think you're going to sell in the next couple months, start collecting those postcards, putting them on your refrigerator, start taking note to the signs in the neighborhood, visit a couple open houses, you know, pay attention. The big thing is, um, you know, check on Zillow, set up alerts yourself um, on the neighborhood around you so that you're alerted when your neighbors go up for sale. Because I can tell you guys, I mean, one of the things, you know, if you think about going to work, pulling out of your driveway, if you go right every single day, when you pull out of your driveway and you never go left, you have no idea what's going on to the left. And especially down the little courts and side streets and things like that. So setting up those alerts ahead of time will let you know when open houses are being you know held. Um, go to the open house, check it out, meet the people, start talking to people. And uh, let's talk about some things that you want to make sure you're asking. You better be asking them what they're going to do to sell your house. What is their marketing plan? How are they going to get your home in front of as many eyes as possible? Everyone's shopping online right now. So Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, you guys know the retail facing sites. People are looking for houses 24 hours a day, seven days a week while the realtor is asleep. How's your house going to look online? You know, ask them. Photography is a big thing, right? We want as many eyeballs. We want as much foot traffic through your door as possible. And with it starting online, the photos have to represent the way your house really looks as if they were standing in, in your front door. Um, so you know, we don't want to see cell phone photos. You know, if the agent's successful, they should be able to afford to have a photographer photo your house. I mean, we have an actual department that will go out and take, you know, professional photos um, and then video. Video is big. You're watching a video right now. Uh, you know, having a video, I'll drop a couple of my property videos in the show notes, uh, but that really helps, you know, from a walkthrough perspective. You know, what's it like living in the area? You know, what's shopping like? You know, covering a lot of these things in videos, fantastic. 
3D tours. We do all of our 3D tours in VR. Uh, so that if somebody has a headset, that's becoming more and more popular amongst the millennials. Uh, they can actually click and walk through your house. It's, it's a realistic tour. And then really, you know, it, it boils down to what else are they going to do besides putting these things online? But here's the thing that I want you to ask them, because this is always, this really tells the story. Ask them what they do to assure that the sites, the Truly, the Redfin, the Zillow, ask them how they verify that the information that when these sites grab it off the MLS is correct and accurate. It's kind of like a trick question because they may say, well, you know, it's automatic. It happens automatic. They just aggregate the data. Um, and it's not true. It, you know, yes, they do aggregate data, uh, but we've had to call Zillow ourselves because the house was listed 10 years ago and there's been a lot of upgrades and they still have, even though, you know, it goes live, they still have those old photos that are online. So you need to call Zillow in a lot of cases and have them deleted. So it's not always aggregating the way that I want to see my client's house being presented online. Another great question to ask when you're interviewing a listing agent is to find out what their opinion is on open houses. Because a lot of agents are gonna say things like an open house is a waste of time, only the nosy neighbors come, uh, you know, that kind of thing. They're gonna tell you it's an inconvenience. And um, I can tell you that one of the best things that you could ever do as an agent for your seller is to hold open houses. And I'm gonna tell you why. But what we're gonna talk about here for a minute is the process of listing your house. So we talked about, you know, having the videos done, the tours, the photos, professional photography. One of the worst things that you can do is speed that, rush through that process. So, you know, I'm always preaching here to my agents, you know, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Doesn't matter. Another week or two is not going to crush your market. I promise you. It allows you to sort of get ahead of things, start the marketing, you know, get the coming soon status going on the MLS by having all the photos and everything done and having a launch date. Um, it kind of sets the stage for you know, the action to begin. So I always list on a Wednesday as a launch date. I have Saturdays and Sundays as open houses. And then we're hoping to negotiate contracts the following week. Um, and yes, that has slowed up a little bit, but even in the slower times, more of a traditional market, it still works great if you do the upfront work, the marketing ahead of time. Um, so here, I'm not sure about your state, what MLS you, you guys uh, fall under, the multiple list service that you fall under, but here in Maryland, in sort of like the mid-Atlantic region, we are allowed to start pre-marketing a house in a coming soon status for up to 21 days before it goes live. If it's a new build, we can go up to two years. If it's a new home construction before, you know, kind of pre-marketing the property. And the reason that's important is because real estate agents have buyers that they have set up on these automatic searches. So, you know, they just, the MLS kicks on the new listings, they hit the market. Well, included with that are the ones that are coming soon. So utilizing that coming soon status, you know, that means that house has to be completely ready to go. You don't have the two or three weeks to get the house ready for market. It has to be ready to go. All the photography has to be done, you know, marketing is set up. And then for those next two weeks, you know, people are looking at the photos, the videos and things like that, getting the alerts. But the important thing is in this launch is that we're setting up with like a broker's open on a Wednesday, inviting other agents to come and look at the house. We hit Saturday and Sunday with public open houses. Guys, there are so many people that don't have agents. So when an agent is telling you, well, you don't need an open house, they don't work, it's totally not true. The flip side of it is a lot of agents are busy on the weekend and they can't satisfy all of their buyers. So by having an open house from 11 to one, it allows them to tell their buyer, look, go by, look at the house. If you're interested in it, I'll help you write an offer. Uh, but it allows the time for the public to come through that they're not worrying about their agent's schedule and whether they you know, can get there at a certain time or even buy it in time before someone else does. What are the preliminary steps before you are ready to actually list your home? You want to focus on your curb appeal and decluttering and depersonalizing the interior of your home. 
from the minute that they pull up, you know, people are kind of setting an opinion of your property. So if they're seeing things that look like deferred maintenance on the outside, you know, messy yard, a lot of leaves, trees growing out of your gutters. Uh, I know it sounds like an exaggeration, but it happens more time than not. It's a different market out there right now. Um, you know, buyers are starting to pull back. They'll spend money on what it is that they want. And if they really fall in love, they'll stretch. You know, even now with the higher interest rates, you know, they, they do have the ability, a lot of them to put down more cash to kind of get the payment they're looking for. Uh, but what Melissa's talking about, depersonalizing, you know, we want to see all your family photos gone. Um, you know, if you can imagine, you know, people walking through somebody else's house, uh, if they're looking at pictures of your family, they're feeling uncomfortable. They feel like they're in someone else's home. We want them to stay as long as possible because no one's falling in love with your house in 10 or 15 minutes. So the more personal stuff that you have, the more they feel like it's not theirs, it's yours, and they hurry through. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bad idea. If you've got a lot of furniture in your house, it's not a bad idea to move some of it out of there, possibly a storage unit, to let more open space flow throughout your home. Yep, declutter get rid of the uh, stuff in your closets. They're going to be open up closet doors, yeah. drawers, things like that. And the last thing that you want to do is let them know that, hey, we don't have enough space for storage here. And the other thing that's really big is odor. And I, you know, I can't tell you how many times I walk into a house and it just doesn't smell good. Uh, sometimes it's just because it's closed up. You know, make sure you're opening the windows, you know, getting some fresh air in the house. But if you have pet smells, things like that, you smoke, uh, these are things that are major turnoffs. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to fix those things now. More inventory is coming on the market, and you sellers have a lot more uh, competition out there for the buyers. Mm -hmm. Now, many of you will have to figure out once I sell my home, where am I gonna go? Yeah, you know, up to now, uh, buyers are really allowing you to rent back, sellers to rent back until they found a place to go. You know, I was talking with someone today that is living in a house that they sold almost six months ago. Uh, buyers gave them six months to find a place to move completely rent free. We're not seeing that so much now. Uh, buyers want you gone. So you may not have the luxury of selling your house and renting back for free or even for a fee for two or three months while you figure out where you're gonna go. So now we're getting back into some traditional real estate. You may end up you know, buying something contingent upon the sale of your own home uh, or renting for a period, uh, living with family or friends to, uh, to transition from one house to the next. Mm -hmm. Put all your non-negotiables in disclosures up front before you list your home. Yeah, one of the last things that you wanna do is get into a situation where you know, you entertain contracts and you take the wrong contract, right? And um, so what Melissa's talking about primarily deals with, you know, what are you willing to fix or not fix? So what we're seeing sellers do a lot right now, uh, which, you know, probably hasn't happened in two years, we're seeing sellers get home inspections before they put the home on the market. And then a lot of times what they're saying is, if it is an as is sale, you know, we're not fixing anything, we're at least gonna give you this inspection report so you know what it is that you're buying. Because a lot of times the buyers will come in even with an as is inspection and they will, you know, take their inspector through the house. They'll determine maybe that it's too much for them to make repairs, too much deferred maintenance. Um, so they may walk according to the contract maybe it's an as is sale with a right to terminate but that really degrades your position in the market because what happens is now everyone sees that the house was under contract and now for whatever reason it's back on the market if in fact you know of why they terminated if it was a major material fact you may have to fix it or disclose it to the next potential buyer. So what we want to try and make sure is that you select the right contract, the right offer, and that you know there's the least possibility for the contract to fall through that will cause your house to go back to active status. So if you know that there are things that are broken with your house, it's always good to put it up front and just let the buyers know through disclosures, hey, this isn't working, we're not fixing it, know it before you come in, and if that's a deal killer, you know, we know it up front and we don't have to, you know, lose it later with mm -hmm. a back to active listing that, you know, the next buyer 
may offer you even less money for your home. You know, the big thing when you're selling your house is you need to establish the sales price. And this is where a lot of sellers, you know, really make a major mistake. They come from the angle of, you know what, we'll put it out there. Maybe the agent thinks that your house should be listed for 450 and they can back that up with comps, you know, solid data to support why 450 is a good listing price. A lot of times the seller will say, I think my house is worth more than what it is that you're showing me. I know that house. You know, we spent more in our basement. Uh, we put luxury carpet in. There may be, a, you know, a dozen things that you can come up with on why you think your house is worth more money. But what the seller will say, and this is the biggest mistake, is they'll say, well, let's try 500000 And if it doesn't sell for that, then in two weeks, we'll drop the price. I can tell you that sellers win more when they price a house where it should be and then it gets a lot of activity and it gets negotiations going and through the you know excitement, there's multiple bids and a higher sale price than it is to get that arrow going in the negative direction. So once we start, you know, it sits on the market for two weeks, we drop the price $10,000, 5000 whatever it is. We drop the price. It's it's sending a message that, hey, your house isn't selling. Something must be wrong. And it just attracts more of the same uh, historically where people offer you even less. Now it comes time to negotiating offers. And what you sellers need to know that usually the first offer is the best offer. It's the most excited offer. So, you know, when you put your house on the market, you have a set group of people that are going to come through first, right? And usually the one that steps up to the bat, they're going, man, I want this house. Let's get it in as quick as possible. And you're right. It is usually the best one. We, we say that in this business and it, it holds pretty true, mm -hmm. I'd say, a large percentage of the time. Uh, but this is where a good listing agent is going to really shine. Because like I said, what we don't want is you to take an offer that's going to fall through. So, you know, buyers, if you're listening to this, I mean, you may pick up some tips on how to craft the offer. And if we have multiple offers, we want to lay them out because it isn't always the best price, right? It's the best terms too, the best terms that suit for you. Are they giving you more time in the home? What is their financing contingency like? You know, how much money are they putting down? Are they putting down the minimum amount where somebody's putting down, you know, 20% or 25% and you have somebody that's putting the minimum down? Um, it could say, you know, something about their ability to, you know, stay in the deal. Uh, if they do have inspections, you know, that they're going to go through, they may not have cash for repairs and may ask you for them. Um, your agent should be calling the lender, asking the, you know, buyer's lender how qualified they are. You know, what kind of a, a qualification letter is it? Are they pre approved uh, or just pre qualified? Uh, and, you know, how long that lender's worked with. Uh, that buyer, you know, a lot of times the lender would tell you, you know, hey, look, you know, this is a great buyer. We've been working. We've been looking at houses for a couple months, kind of give you some tips there uh, that you may be able to utilize in your negotiations. But really, don't be afraid to ask questions about the offer. Just don't look at the offer and say, well, this is it and get offended at one thing or the next. You know, take the time to look at it, make a list of questions to have your agent go to that buyer's agent with that list of questions to get you more information and maybe some more answers that you need to feel, you know, one way or another, whether you should take their offer. And guys, I think the biggest thing is right now, um, you need to manage your expectations. I think a lot of the frustration that I see from my sellers and, you know, I have one seller, they listed their house for 1.5 million. They got some offer that was crazy, hundreds of thousands of dollars over ask price. It fell through. The next offer in line was several thousands of dollars less, uh, but they went ahead back to the second backup offer that ended up falling through. Um, and this is another brokerage. It's not, it's not us. It's out of town. But they took their house off for two weeks. They put their house back on the market. They had a couple open houses, nothing, no offers. Um, this is all in the last week, you know, uh, unfolding. Um, they're completely upset. They're distraught. It is a roller coaster, right? I mean, they've prepared their house for sale. I think it's important. You have to manage your expectations right now in the shifting of the tide. You may be in an area where, you know what, you price it right. You still get a lot of activity um, depending on what the Fed's going to do in the 
next couple months. Uh, they're talking about doubling where we are in interest rates right now. And as we've said it before, I mean, it doesn't directly affect mortgages, but it does because, you know, number one, we've been historically low on our mortgage rates and we're getting back to normal times. So really, the the my opinion, the interest rates are going to be seven, eight, nine percent again. Um, that's going to be a typical thirty year mortgage, and buyers are going to have to sort of digest what they can afford in purchase price from that point on. I do think that this is just the beginning. I think we are going to see you know a major setback in home prices. So I think if you are looking to sell. If you need to sell, I mean, it's like anything else, right? If you can hold on long enough, uh, we go to, through this downturn, ultimately house prices recover within a couple years. We can look at the historical charts and see that um, it is a permanence of investment. But if you're looking, if you're backward looking at what you could have sold your house for two months ago, and you're going to run everything you do based on your attitude about that, um, you may just want to cool off, wait, stay put, stay you know, stay where you are, and um, you know, let the dust settle here. Um, you know, if you're going to be objective about it, be able to understand that hey, you may be ten or twenty, fifty thousand dollars less, depending on your price point, than what you could have gotten two months ago, and you're okay with that. You have a lot of equity. It's going to get you to the next chapter in life. You know, manage your way through this. Make sure you have a great agent, and if you need one, reach out. I'll be happy to connect you to somebody in your city. My broker network is amazing. If you're here in Maryland, I'd love to help you myself. And uh, guys, we appreciate you're watching we love your comments and questions keep them coming and if you like this video you can hit the thumbs up and let Melissa and I know that you do and guys we love it when you subscribe hit that alert bell it assures us that you'll get our videos every time we post see you next time see you next time Sachs Realty Maryland broker number 607720 office number 443-318-4514 equal housing opportunity